Hi there, Linda Goodall here. Last Christmas, I decided to make personalized doggy bandanas for my dog Riley and his furry little friends. I'd seen some similar bandanas at a street fair, and rather than tie on to the dog around his neck, what you do is you slip the dog's collar through a casing underneath the name there. It looked pretty simple. I did this mostly in the hoop, just requires a little bit of finishing at the sewing machine. And what I want to show you in this video is how to do the placement, and then in another video, I'll show you how to work out an in the hoop project like this. Now the trick with these kind of things is getting the placement right. You can see that on these two bandanas, the placement is pretty identical. And if we look at um, my dog here, you can see that's how it works on the dog. So his collar is just going right through there. So let's see how to do this. Now in Hatch, what we could do is we could bring in a piece of artwork that had all those lines on there, but there's a better way in Hatch and that's through articles, and that's what we're going to look at here. So let's create a new document, and I'm going to show you about articles. Now articles can be found on background and display colors under customize, or you can just go to background here. That's the faster way. And on this tab, you can see where we can set the colors for the background and inside the hoop, and right below this one is this factory article button. And what this is, is a bunch of pre-made things so you can preview your design on a cap. And on some of these things you can actually pick colors. But there's no doggy bandana in there. What you need to do is create one yourself, and I've done that. So let's click on Custom Article, and we'll browse. And notice that we're in Users, Public, Public Pictures, Hatch One, Articles. And if I back up one layer, you can see all about blanks. You'll have this one. I created a new folder, and I just put my bandanas in there. So let's um, open that. And I'm going to open this small bandana and just click Open. And click OK. There is my bandana. And I can't select it because it's like a background element. Remember, we selected it from the background items. And the cool thing about this is it's always in there, and whenever I want to do a new bandana, I just have to bring this up and choose it. Now, what I did was I created a whole template file for this, and I'll show you that in a moment, but first, let me talk a bit about this. If you've done any sewing, you'll probably see these lines and you'll know exactly what they mean. But if you've never sewn a, a garment or a project with a pattern on your sewing machine rather than just doing embroidery, this might not make a lot of sense. So this outer line here is the cutting line for my bandana. This inner dotted line is the seam line. Then we have these two red boxes, and these red boxes are just placement guides for where I could put my design elements and have them show up pretty good on my bandana. Now once I take it out of the hoop, I'm going to fold this over so that this top piece gets folded to the back, and then I'm going to stitch right on that line. So it'll top stitch this back piece down, and then I'll have a casing, and I can shove my collar through there. Now this casing is kind of tall, kind of wide, and the reason is because most dog collars these days have these plastic quick release clips. They're pretty bulky. And I had to work with this several times to make this wide enough to get the collar on there with one of those clips. So here's my template, but here's what I've done with my design. So you can see that I've got the name there. I've got some design elements here. I've got some other stitching going around here. It's kind of hard to see, so let's turn off the um, bandana for a moment. There you can see the actual design. So this will become my real template for making all the other doggy bandanas. Once I've worked this out and I figured out, yeah, this is good, I'm going to just go in here, change the name to something else, uh, Woofy, for example, and there's the new name. Now let's talk a little bit more about custom articles. So I'm going to go back to background. I'm going to select my custom article. I'm 
and there it is. I drew this in Adobe Illustrator. Probably most of you are using CorelDRAW. I'm still a Mac person, so I use Adobe Illustrator. It really doesn't matter what you draw it in. So as long as you can get that into a PNG or maybe a JPEG, Hatch can be able to find it if you put it in that folder. Now what if you can't draw? Well, you can get patterns online. Let's say that you're making, I don't know, oven mitts and you want to do some embroidery on the, the mitt before you construct it. You can download that PDF pattern, use some piece of software, usually a, an image program can open a PDF, and just save it out as a PNG, put it in that folder, and remember if you forget where it is, just go to background and click on custom article and it's in users, public, pictures, hatch one pictures. And then you'll just create a folder in there and drag and drop it in there. The nice thing about being here rather than being in the hatch folder is it should be reasonably protected if you upgrade hatch or somehow need to reinstall it that those files should still be okay. Now before we leave and go on to the next video I want to point out that I've added a couple ruler guides here. So you can see that I've used some ruler guides to mark this area so that I know where the name goes and that way I won't get it too long, I won't get it too tall because I don't want to stitch across the bottom of the, the line. So if you have a really long dog name you might have to decrease the size of your fonts. In the next video I'll show you how I designed the in the hoop part because this is a really easy simple in the hoop project and if you've never designed one from scratch then Come with me and I'll show you what you need to think about to plan one out. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.